Mid-South Baseball Report. I'm your host, Johnny Brown. Today I'm blessed to sit down with new University of Memphis head coach, Carrick Jackson. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. I appreciate okay. you having me on. Yeah, going to make the introductory uh, short and sweet. Just really want to get to uh, what, you, what have you been doing for the last five months? I'm sure it's been a whirlwind since uh, your introductory uh, press conference and just uh, just curious what's going on with, with Tiger Baseball. Yeah, you know, like you said, it's uh, coming in here, uh, getting trying to get settled in, getting understanding who we're going to have on staff, getting the staff together, meeting all the different people uh, on campus, uh, spending some time with the returners, um, and then kind of hitting the ground running from a recruiting standpoint. Needing to get some transfers in. There, we only had three commitments or four commitments uh, from the the twenty two class, so we had to kind of beef that up to to get some guys in here and then get the fall planned out and started executing that. And we're about just about halfway through the fall right now. So um, learning the team and learning the guys and in addition to bringing the family down and finding a place to live and doing all those kind of things. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a whirlwind. Yeah, I, I was going to mention that you're, you're busy taking care of baseball stuff, but you got a wife and two kids. You had to get settled into a new house, uh, new schools and, and just a, a new new Memphis environment. So how's that going? It's going good. And my mama, she's oh. down here. She moved down here with us. Well, so. good. Um, so yeah, no, we, we got settled in. It's actually, you all start school here earlier than they did in St. Louis. So the boys were actually here with me for two weeks and it was just the three of us. Um, so that was some, some good bonding time for us while school started and then everybody else moved down. So yeah, we're, we're settled in, got a house and um, getting settled into the Memphis way of life. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Uh, first question I got for you is, you know, Memphis, uh, as far as a baseball job, what did, what attracted you to that? You know, I've being from St. Louis um, and in previous stops that I've had as a coach coming here and recruiting the Keith Hagan tournament, which was a premier place uh, to come and a stop on the circuit uh, in the past. And then when I had pro coverage um, coming down and covering the Memphis Redbirds, so I'd always been in the area. Um, this is always a place that I thought could be a, a monster um, in the in the landscape of Division One college baseball. Um, when you look at the area where it's located in, the amount of baseball talent that is in the area, and then when you expand out about a six-hour radius, that six hours covers a lot of area that of that you're getting quality baseball players from. So for me, this was a place that you know, if if given the right opportunity, it's always a place that I felt I could come in and and do some really good things here. Yeah. Uh, you're well connected, you know, not only from a, a coaching standpoint, but you've spent time with Major League Draft. Uh, you've spent time as, as a as an agent. Uh, expand a little bit about your history and, and what led you to becoming a head coach at the Division One level. So, like you said, I've always been a coach at heart, and I think all the other stops have been stops of um, circumstance more than desire, if you will. Each one of them brought me something different. Uh, and expanded my knowledge base, but the move from coaching to being an, uh, a scout with the Nationals um, was a move of circumstance. The move from leaving Missouri and going to the Boris Corporation was a move of circumstance. So each one of those moves um, was, I was blessed um, to find those uh, opportunities that kept me in the game, but there were circumstantial moves that allowed, again, to me increase my knowledge base. And so now, being able to, as you said, at this point, done just about everything there is to do in the game, and now to find myself in a place where now the kids that are coming into us, um, when it comes to guys that we have that are going to be potential pro guys, there's many different a avenues where I can assist them in understanding what that transition is going to be like. Yeah, you definitely built your toolbox to to have a, a lot of different weapons to, uh, from your standpoint, to, to work with. No question. No question. Um, there's a lot of excitement right now amongst the Memphis baseball community, uh, and, and I know you really can't probably speak on commitments and, and things of that nature, so I don't want to really get into that, but I want to give you and, and your staff some props because you're starting, I've seen, noticed, you know, through social media that uh, you've gotten several high school kids from the 2024 class. Uh, you know, we're just coming up to the 23 class, but you've already gotten several 24 commitments, and, and that's commendable and just shows the effort that, that you and your staff are putting into this. 
Um, so I want to talk about your staff a little bit. Uh, your, your two lead recruiters, I believe, uh, uh, both uh, Ryan Huber and Julian Henson, man, they, they've hit the ground running. They have, they have, and it, it is very beneficial, obviously. Coach Huber was here before. Um, he and I had some conversations. Uh, so once we talked and I knew that we were aligned in our ideologies, it was it was great opportunity to bring him on board. And then Coach Henson, I've known him for a while. Back when he was coaching in the travel ball circuit, we met about 10 years ago um, and then had a chance to kind of rejuvenate and, and rekindle that relationship once I got here. And knowing that guy's passion, work ethic, uh, and the way that he goes about his business, it, it put together, you know, basically put me in a position to put together really quality staff with those two. Yeah, both, both those guys I, I know well. I, I've known Julian when I was coaching uh, Julian had signed with me. Uh, never, he never went to college, and I never got the opportunity to coach him. But I've known him and his, his mom and dad for gosh, 15, 17 years now. Just you know, have watched his work ethic as a player, watched his work ethic as a coach, and and I think he's a home run hire for you. Uh, he he's easily um, a magnet to these these kids and these families that you're that you're talking to trying to get to come into your program and, and Ryan's the same way every time I turn around Ryan's out here recruiting event that we have and, and he's a tireless worker and and he's got a really good eye for talent uh, so I think both those guys are, are eight pluses uh, and then Tim Jameson uh, you mentioned you coached at, at Missouri uh, Tim Jameson was the head coach at Mizzou you was his assistant first time I ever met you was was here when I think y'all came down and Kind of got snowed out in yeah. Columbia and came down and played uh, 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 Illinois Chicago over a weekend and and brought the snow with you. Uh, <laughs> yes. But uh, you know, talk about your relationship with Coach Jamison and what he brings to the table. Well, I, I think when you talk about Coach Jay and and what he's been in my life personally as well as professionally, um, when I this opportunity presented itself, he was the first person I, I reached out to and said, hey. You know, if, if this thing happens, uh, I'd love for you to be able to come on board. And um, and, and I think there's no uh, greater show of respect than a guy that I work for. I reached out to and said, hey, I, I want to work with you again. Um, and, and I'm bringing him on board again, close to 40 years experience in the business, um, coached on both sides of the ball. He's our pitching coach now. Very well respected pitching coach. Yes, um, coached a number of big leaguers. He has a teaching mindset. Um, and also, I, I brought him in to teach me, right? Um, I, I'm not that guy that, that believes I have it all figured out, uh, that I have all the answers. Uh, I tell people all the time, I don't have to be right. I just want to get it right. Uh, and so I think to bring someone in like him, that if I'm going left and he can get in my ear and say, hey, we probably need to go right here. Um, and, and I trust him. I know that he's got my best interest at heart. Uh, so yeah, to bring him on staff. And I think not only will he help me, but he'll help Julian and he'll help Huber and, and everybody that we have on staff. Sure thing. Everybody's got to have a glue guy in your in your organization. I may be wrong, but is your glue guy, does it have anything to do with what Al Woods brings to the table? A hundred percent. Aside from Coach Jay, Al was 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 my my initial call. Um, and I had, when I when I was going through the process, they kind of told me that he may be transitioning. Um, I asked them if that was his choice or their choice. Um, and so I reached out to Al and said, hey, listen, uh, you may not want to do this. You may be tired of the travel or whatever, but if you could at least give me one year, I'd appreciate it. Um, and then after that, you can go do whatever. And he's like, no, I don't have any desire to go anywhere. I said, well, then as long as you want to be here, you got a job. So um, you can't, like you said, you can't have anybody better than that um, on your side. And, and who knows the ropes? Yeah. Well, and you'll figure it out when you go up and down the road with him. He knows everybody in every town and he's going to know every place to eat and you're going to be taken care of wherever you go yes yes so, definitely so that that's also a plus to have in your corner uh you guys are out here practicing today uh today's friday and, and you guys are out here practicing in preparation for a scrimmage against arkansas little rock uh, originally scheduled for saturday but with the rain coming in we bumped it to sunday two o'clock start it's going to be your first outside competition uh, what what do you look to get out of it from a team standpoint, you know, getting off the practice field, you know, seeing some other colored jerseys and, and just trying to figure out uh, what you got. Talk a little bit about that. You know, the biggest thing I've told our guys is I want them to manage the level of adrenaline and go out and play a clean game. 
Um, throw strikes, quality at bats, play good defense, play hard. Uh, don't get caught up into producing. Um, and, and which that's tough with kids nowadays where, where they're all so concerned with the external um, with regards to the production and the numbers and what the numbers say. And, and, and I'm going to put a high emphasis on them this weekend and next weekend to control the controls. Go out and put yourself in a situation where you play the game the right way, you play it hard, you play it the way that we want to play it, and then whatever happens at the end of the day is what happens. Um, and so I think that's going to be the toughest part for them is, like you said, we have been scrimmaging against each other. There is going to be somebody else in the dugout with a different jersey on. Can they manage the level of adrenaline and go out and play a clean game? And to this point in scrimmages, we've been moving in that direction. We've talked about different things. We've had our ups and downs. We've had some setbacks here and there, but we're slowly, slowly moving in the right direction. So I just want to continue that momentum. Yeah, in, in my past history with scrimmages against your own teams, those get a little stagnant, a little old. So you see somebody in a different jersey, you, you got the adrenaline ju does uh, jump up another notch. You gotta, you gotta learn how to, how to control it. You know, you're what, three and a half, four months away from, from regular season when right. it really matters. So you've got a lot of new faces, a lot of people you're trying to still get to know, and you gotta figure out how they fit into your program and what they're gonna do when, when the lights come on. Yeah, 100%. Uh, your fall practice, you mentioned, been going on for a couple weeks now. Uh, just looking at your current roster, uh, there, there's some names that jump off the paper at me when I look at it. Uh, and, and the first thing I think you've inherited and what you put together and assembled is pretty solid pitching staff. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got some really good arms. Uh, most of these guys are local products of the Memphis area, DeSoto County. Uh, talk about some of those guys, Dalton Fowler, Carson Stinnett, Dalton Kendrick, uh, first three that, that uh, kind of come to mind for me. Yeah, like you said, when, when I first heard from Memphis about their interest in me for the job, I immediately started watching games uh, just to get an idea of what was there. And, and those three guys you talked about were kind of some of those three that jumped out right away as far as, as you well know, you've been doing it long enough, it, pitching and defense is everything. And, and so that's what, as I started to dig in a little bit deeper, that's what made me feel really good about walking into this situation was I knew that we had some depth uh, on the pitching staff and that we'd be able to add some pieces to that. But those three guys in particular, um, Carson um, Stinnett has been down this fall and recovering from an injury, but with his experience and what he's done in the past, we're looking for somebody who's a veteran who knows how to go about it to step back in and, and be that guy. Um, obviously with Dal Dalton Fowler, you know, last year he kind of got banged up there right at the end of the year, but um, you know, he's been back healthy this fall. We've made some adjustments uh, in his delivery. We've actually, you know, we found out he had some mobility issues in his hips and his ankles, and so we've addressed those, hopefully to get him uh, in a better position to go out and repeat. Um, he, he had issues with being consistent, throwing strikes, and we've kind of, we think we fixed the, those issues as well. Um, and then when you talk about uh, Dalton Kendrick, um, you know, I mean, that dude has been a beast. I heard his velocity is really good. It's, it's special, it's, it's fun to watch him. He's pitching both sides of the plate with the fastball, has the feel for the change, obviously, and, and getting the slider in there. And just has the right mentality um, to uh, about how to go about it. So when you look at those guys, um, they're gonna be some, some guys that are gonna be able to get in there for us as returners and, and really do some positive things. Yeah, and you mentioned depth. A couple other guys that, that I think, you know, got some innings uh, in the last year or two. Uh, Daniel Casto, Logan Rushing, JT Durham, uh, how, how those are, you know, some some really got really good guys that's got some experience, and, and I feel like probably going to move into a pretty substantial role for you. Definitely, I, I think the, the key to us is going to be can we, how do we manage the game from the seventh to the ninth inning, right? Those last three innings are crucial, um, and, and having a quality bullpen and guys that you can run out of there that when you have a lead, you hand them the ball, and you know they can go out and do their jobs, and those guys that you mentioned um, will be guys that factor into that, that equation of being able to have our starters go six innings, hand the ball off to the bullpen in the seventh, and then that bullpen be able to shut it down. Yeah, uh, another, uh, another local product from St. Benedict, Luke Ellis, Ole Miss transfer, lefty, really good velocity. Uh, redshirted last year, but now now he's home, and I'm sure he's going to be in the mix as well. He is. He's had a good fall to this point. Um, gone out, proved that he can throw strikes, pitch both sides of the plate, works quick. 
um, attacks hitters. You know, he's got some funk in his delivery, so uh, the ball jumps on hitters a little bit, which is which is a plus uh, when you have that extra bit of deception in there. And then the fact that he's been someplace else and seen things done at a high level, which is obviously where we're going to be, and having a guy like that that's had that experience there to come here um, is also beneficial to yeah. us. Let's talk about some of your sort of your offensive guys, uh, Logan Kohler. Uh, guy that started a lot of games last year on the infield, um, mostly at third base. Uh, he transferred in from Oklahoma. Uh, what, what are you seeing out of him this fall? High baseball IQ guy, um, plays really, really good defense. Uh, again, I think he'll be third or first for us this year. Left-handed bat, um, who's got some power in there. We need to unlock that a little bit and, and let him know it's okay to let it loose. Um, but, but understands how to play the game, high contact guy. And so we just need to make sure he understands the, the position that he's in and the order offensively. We're going to look for him to be a run producer. Um, and, and, and to be a run producer, we need you to drive the ball and, 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 and put the ball in the gaps and put the ball over the fence every, every once in a while. Um, but we know he's going to get out there and play quality defense for us and he's going to play hard every day. Yeah, for, for him to be a run producer, you need guys on base. I see a guy, don't know where he's going to fit in. I'm going to let you talk about him, Braylon Skinner. This is a guy that can really run. Uh, guy has got some high-level playing time, uh, won a, a World Series championship at Mississippi State. He's now here for his graduate senior year. Talk about Braylon and, and where you think he fits into what's going on. High motor guy, um, team favorite. Um, he epitomizes how we want to go about our business. Um, dude never takes a playoff. Uh, sometimes I wish he would uh, because he's going he's gonna to run himself ragged. But, um, but yeah, he'll be in there uh, someplace where he'll hit in the order. I don't know. But, but like you said, high on base guy plus defender uh, in the outfield. And then when he gets on bases, he'll wreak havoc on the bases and put himself in a position to have guys um, like Kohler drive him in. Yeah. You know, he, like I said, another local guy. We, we, we followed him from his time at Northwest to, to being at Mississippi State to, to now being here uh, at Memphis. So, uh, really anxious to see, see what he can do for you uh, during his senior year. Uh, two other guys that, that were part of the program last year, uh, Braden Webb, Austin Baskin, uh, got quite a bit of playing time last year. Uh, but where, where are they fitting in? I, I know it's a battle every day, but uh, I, I'm sure those are guys with experience that you're counting on. Yeah, definitely. Those guys have had really good falls, work really hard. Um, I think, you know, anytime you have change, um, it, they're that – presents some difficulties to some kids. And those are two kids that have really, really bought into the things that we're looking uh, to, to do and how we need to go about our business and representing that very well. So they'll definitely put themselves in the mix come springtime. Yeah, a anybody that I didn't highlight or talk about that, that's that's impressed you to this point that, that you want to speak on? Yeah, a couple of our freshmen that we got coming in. You know, you got RJ Jemerson, who's a, a kid from Springfield, Illinois, who's coming in as a true freshman, can really swing the bat, outfielder. Uh, Cam Benson, who's a Division One transfer from Akron, left-handed hitter, uh, came in as a shortstop, a utility guy for us, maybe short third, um, but he can really swing the bat. And, and probably the, the biggest one is Anthony Hansen, um, left-handed hitter who um, is a fifth-year guy because of COVID, um, was at a Division Two school, put up some really good offensive numbers, left-handed bat, takes professional at bats, really – really knows what he's doing in the box um, and, and is going to be big in the middle of the order. I think he's that combo of run producer and run scorer. Um, not necessarily a blazer on the bases, but he will have a high on base percentage. And I think he'll hit for a high average and he's got some power in there. And then Brendan Bowes, who's a returner for us um, behind the plate. Um, you you, you got to be good back there. Sure. Um, and he's really kind of stepped up and, and done some positive things for us. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, you know, pitching the defense, that, that's what you wanted to build your team around. But your style of play, past the pitching and defense and, and the normal coach speak, what, what, do you, what do you really want to see your team? And I know it probably fluctuates from team, team to team with your personnel, but how do you see this team in the limited amount of time that you've been with them, how do you see what this game is going to play for them in, in the springtime? I think we'll be able to do a lot of things, right? I, th I think we're going to be offensive. Um, and for us, we want to play fast. Um, and, and we want to we want to always look to get the extra 90 um, anytime it's there. Thinking hustle doubles out of the box, always advancing on ball and dirts, looking for opportunities to steal, um, looking for opportunities to go first to third, those types of things. Um, and then we, we really have obviously impressed upon our guys 
the importance of playing quality defense. Um, that, that at the end of the day, college baseball is about scoring runs, not getting hits. Um, and so the, the, the opportunities that you limit for the other team to move up 90 feet puts us in a better position. Um, and it's okay to win games one to nothing. Yeah. Um, and so that, those are the things that we've kind of impressed upon, and that, that's how I look at, to see us going about our business. Yeah. Kind of a leading question right here, but is it easier to play quality defense on a turf field? <laughs> I, I believe that it is. The, uh, the downside to it is it will allow guys to get lazy, right? Um, and so we have to be able to keep them in check with regards to, yes, um, we do have turf and everything could and will be a little bit more true, but at the same time, we're going to play on some natural gas surfaces. I think Field Turf, the company that is doing our turf, uh, when you look at their product, it plays about as real um, as you could possibly get when you're dealing with turf fields. So I think that will also be an advantage for us that the transition won't be as bad um, from natural to turf or turf to natural because their field plays so much like uh, a natural field. Right. So for just to backtrack a little bit, for those that's watching this video that's been under a rock, University of Memphis is under full renovations right now at, at FedEx Park. Uh, new turf surface, infield, outfield, uh, spending about $3.5 million from what I understand from, from generous donors. Uh, possibility, maybe a new video board or something like that. I'll, I'll let you kind of speak on some of those yeah. details. Yeah, definitely. New turf, new outfield wall, um, moving the visitor's bullpen, enlarging the home bullpen, cutting down on some of the foul territory. Um, people that have been out there before, we had a lot of foul territory, so we've cut down on some of that, made some more fan-friendly amenities, specifically down that left field side. Um, and then the new video board, new sound system, uh, and seats. So uh, a lot of exciting things going on. and. I just think it fits into the path and trajectory that we're going to take as a program uh, to continue to always be moving forward. And, and this is just an initial step in that. Yeah. Well, Coach, I'm excited. I know a lot of other people are excited for, for you to be here. Uh, you've hit the ground running. And I, I, I was at your introductory press conference, was immediately impressed uh, with the things and the goals that you have and, and, and the, the, the direction that you want to go with this program. and and. I know that, that you're going to work tirelessly to make this happen. I wish you nothing but, the, uh, but the utmost success in this. And as we close, I want to remind everybody, Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock, we're going to have a doubleheader, uh, Memphis versus Arkansas Little Rock, and be your first chance to catch Tigers and, and baseball action. Coach, nothing but best of luck to you guys, and I look forward to watching the Tigers.